Hey everybody, welcome to Mattman, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. Of course, I'm joined by my lifelong tag team partner. We've been in a relationship for 20-something years, Rich. How that do you feel true. about that? I feel great about it. Like Richard I, Stambolian, everybody. What's up, guys? Like I said the other day in our group, in our very fancy group chat, I said I've never been anywhere with you. This is the first time. First vacation, yeah. First vacation. First trip. And by the way, don't worry about the flight. I'm bringing my Switch. Oh, you are? Play a little video game. Oh, yeah. Together. We'll play some video games together. Uh... Guys, this is uh, the show is all about professional wrestling. Actually, it's not all about professional wrestling. There's a lot of stuff <laughs> we get into. That we talk, we about. talk about a lot of stuff, but it's primarily based about professional wrestling. Guys, remember to be sure to hit the subscribe button. It helps us out. Every time you uh, you hit the subscribe button, it helps us out within YouTube. Every time you hit the like button, YouTube likes mm -hmm. that. Also, we're everywhere podcasts are available. I believe right now, at this very moment, we are the number 32 most popular pro wrestling podcast in the world. We're being beat by everybody. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, do us a favor. Go on iTunes. If you have uh, Apple Podcasts, if you have uh, Google Podcast, whatever podcast you, platform you listen to, go ahead over there and hit the subscribe button. Uh, tremendous help. We have a huge week ahead of us. I want to get this it. out of the way now. Yes. Uh, at the top of the hour, we will be live from the Sapphire Day Club, the Sapphire Pool, Sapphire Topless Pool, in <laughs> Las Vegas. We're going to be there for Stummer Slam. Uh, some same weekend, we're going to be live on Friday afternoon from the pool. Head on over to their website, Sapphire Pool, uh, Sapphire Las Vegas. Go on over to their website, see how you could get in, join us. Uh, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a special guest list also. Oh yeah, uh, a lot of surprises popping by. Uh, our guest host will be Rob Van Dam. He's going to be joining us at the pool. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I believe Katie Forbes is going to be there. Uh, so Katie Forbes and Rob Van Dam. Las Vegas natives. We have a lot to ask him, obviously. I want to know about his CBD stuff. I want to know about that, too. I have so many yeah. questions for both of them. Yeah, so we're going to be there. Las Vegas, Nevada, live on Friday. We're getting there Thursday night, so we're going to be around the city. We'll go Thursday, we'll probably go to dinner. We'll go to oh, catch, yeah. maybe, on yeah. Thursday night. Head on over to the club afterwards. Sure. We'll go to Sapphire. My God, I got to tell you, I had a fun Sunday night at Sins. I heard, I heard. Oh, boy. I got Who, who was there, I, I'm going to go into it. I'm going to go into it because I'm, you saw the videos. I think everybody saw the videos. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be live there, and then we're going to be at SummerSlam on Saturday. Obviously, everybody's, you know, everybody's going to be there. I can't wait to meet you guys. So <laughs> if you see us, if you just look for my ridiculous loafers. I mean, this is how you're going to find me. <laughs> I'm going to wear something ridiculous like this. And you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's Andrew Zarian. And also, I'll be standing next to him. <laughs> and, and here's the problem. It's not going to be me. It's just going to be another Persian dude. Uh, that is true. You know? People, you know what? <laughs> guys. If you see somebody that looks like Andrew that doesn't have me next to them, it's not me. It's a fake Persian guy. It's a fake Persian guy. <laughs> I'm a fake Persian guy. I'm not even Persian. I just I identify as Persian now. I just mm. make it easier to people. Because I get Iranians that constantly ask me. They're like, well, like, and then they know who I am. They're like, Andrew John, are you Persian? Uh -huh. Are you Iranian? And I go, Yeah, that's it. That's me. That's me. That's me. Don't give me a potato. Uh, don't give me your potatoes, though. So uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about, obviously. Uh, very excited for this really eventful week. Uh, and then we're going to Chicago afterwards. And then we're going to be here in New York. Then we're going to be at the Garden. Then we're going to be at Survivor Series in Brooklyn, which oh, just got wow. announced. So we have a ton going out on. I can't wait to meet you guys. So uh, let's start off with this, right? Um where do you want to go, Rich? All right. Uh, at the top, again, this is going to be a very quick show. Very we got to be out of here in 40 minutes. Uh, as always, if you super chat us, your questions will be asked ahead of time in front of everybody. We got a couple of super chats in here. We're going to address them first when we do the Q&A. Yeah. All right. So here's the big thing this week. And uh, I'm not accusing you of being a WWE show or oh, an AEW show. Dude, come on. Isn't that crazy? It's a little stupid. I think it's also from people who don't watch anything and don't know about the internet. You know, they don't yeah. do the trail. You could easily click on somebody's profile and be like, oh, that's what they do. Um, NXT is going to start taping episodes. Is this a temporary thing from what you got, from what you gathered? USA is not happy about this. Okay. So let me, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of filling in the blanks, which I hate doing. Right. Right. And, I I'll always, whenever I post something like this, as someone told me, I'll always say like, "This is it. This is what they said." I have no idea. Um, I'll I'll elaborate more when I get more information. But this is what was said to me. So I believe if you guys have what the exact tweet the tweet was, uh, it'll mm -hmm. be much easier for me. But let me let see. Me, here. Let me punch that up there. Punch it up. Okay. So one of 
a friend of mine. So this is the best thing. Some people are like, how do you have access to, to, to executives if you're not a journalist? I'm oh, like, boy. you think journalists, like, you think these people don't go out to eat dinner? You think these people don't have friends? <laughs> <laughs> or need to or need to take a load off or blow off some and also, steam. I gotta tell you, most of these guys that tell me stuff don't give a shit about pro wrestling. Yeah, dude. Okay, these are not pro wrestling guys. Like they're they they you, they don't even know or care. Like this is a not event for this guy to say these things to me. Right. These are not right? regional promotions. No. You know, like uh, upholding kayfabe. Like, go ahead. Right. I got the tweet pulled yeah. up over here. Spoke to a contact from USA Network regarding the rumors of NXT going back to a tape show, and in quotes. A tape show is not what we paid for. Yeah, that was it. Simple as that. Okay. So I said, do you, that was it. That's all he said. And I laughed. So I took it as they're not going to a tape show. That was my, that's me adding my thought to this, but I can't add that. I can't put that in a story because that's my opinion. Right, right. I don't care. Like nobody cares about my opinion on this other than that because I'm reporting a fact. I'm reporting mm -hmm. a quote. So, and that is true. USA Network did not pay for a tape show. They paid for a live two-hour program. That's mm -hmm. what WWE is getting paid for. The rumors that they are going to go to a taped process moving forward, I don't see that happening. Right. Because they're a live product. They've, they're, pay, they're paying for a live product. If they go preempted for a few weeks, that's understandable. That always happens. Right, right. There is room for that. Unless it's in a clause where you can't ever do that, which I don't, I don't know any... Uh, media company that that has mm -hmm. that in a policy. There are make goods, obviously. Right, right. But nobody has that. Uh, so if you fill in blanks on a rumor, right? If you're filling in blanks, I can't help you with that. All I could do is state what I what what was said. Now, yes. this what this uh, my opinion, I don't believe they're going to become a taped product. Right. But Anything that's my opinion, and I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't bat a thousand with my opinions. I don't think anybody should. You know, your opinion is your opinion. You're taking a risk. You're assuming. You're filling in blanks. You're uh, coming to a conclusion based on whatever information you know. That's not what I'm posting here. I don't post my opinion like that. Right. But I, you know what you said was a very factual statement, and I'm going to break it down in a very easy way. I think if you become friends with, let's say, Burger King. And then you go, hey, listen, I'm going to pay you for a Whopper a week. Give it to me every Tuesday. Yeah. And they say, no problem. And then they go, how about we give you four Whoppers at the end of the month? That's not what you paid for. Yeah. That's not what you paid for. I want all the Whoppers. So I, I'm going to tell you, you know, I, I do I believe they're going to a tape show? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't. I, I, that's my opinion. And I'm fine with being wrong on that. You know? I'm fine with that. I'm right, fine right, right. if I'm yeah. wrong with my opinion. I just don't like being wrong when I report stuff like this. I, I take my credibility with this very seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm not a journalist. I don't, this isn't my, you know, 10 year investment in my career. Mm -hmm. I do this because I like to do it. Right. Right. I'm having fun doing this. Rich is having fun doing this. Oh, yeah. If I'm able to add to the community mm -hmm. and I'm able to make it better in some way yeah. and I'm able to provide information like this, that's awesome. It's cool. I like doing it. It's fun. I'm not doing it because I have a contractual commitment right. to have to get scoops. Or a weird hard-on for this stuff, too. Or a weird hard-on yeah. for this stuff. Listen, I love pro wrestling. I yeah. love it. It really, I genuinely love all aspects of wrestling. I have no, uh, like, I don't have any ill will towards a company. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't care, uh, you know, about this this crazy AEW versus WWE thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I. I, I think it's bonkers. I think that whole thing is bonkers. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's like it's become a sick obsession for people to pick sides. <laughs> it's very toxic. It, it's very toxic because we're tribal. We're you, listen, man. The last six years in this world, mm -hmm. we've seen how tribal of people. Oh we yeah, are. yeah, yeah. So I I really I, I'm very disconnected from that shit. I really am. I really don't care for it. I don't care for one side to beat another side. I just want good wrestling. That's all I want. And when it's bad, guess what? If, if the day comes and I don't want to do this anymore, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to talk about yeah, wrestling yeah, yeah. ever again. It, I, honestly, Rich, and I, and I hate saying this, but the, if the day comes, we sit mm. in the studio, we do a show, and we're like, this isn't working. You know what? We have enough of a friendship that we can hang out and do some shit every day. Every week we can That's hang true. out. <laughs> this, is, this is therapy for me doing this. So I, I, I don't understand that, you know, pick wanting a brand to fail. Mm -hmm. NXT, I want it to do well. 
more than anything else mm. because it's another great product on television. I mean, that's what it comes down to. I agree with that. But Please, go ahead, Rich. But I think the ne- a lot of this negativity comes from just, again, like we talked about last week, people not getting what they want and thinking there's some kind of conspiracy involved with it. Yeah. You know, and then taking those conspiratorial thoughts yeah. and making really awful takes, you know, like a lot. Let's let's be honest here. A lot of folks' social media hot takes on pro wrestling are completely obtuse and nonsense. So yeah. here, here's one, right? This guy's been on my ass and I mm-hmm. and I never do this. But I, I mean, this is a great example of this, right? Yeah. I'm starting to think Zarian is a pay Tony Khan shell. By the <laughs> way, Tony, I'm going to see you in I'm going to see you probably in Chicago. I'll probably most likely run into you at one of these events. Uh-huh. We have a lot of mutual friends. I would love to be your shell. All right. I don't care. I'm mm-hmm. not a journalist. Pay me. No, I'm joking, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I'm not joking. <laughs> but I am joking. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Uh, listen, man, I, I think it's I, I think that whole thing is bizarre. I right? like pay Tony Concha WWE shill. It's stupid. I, it I also stupid. I'm just looking at the stuff this guy's I mean, sending you to and it's ridiculous. So I, I'm like, I don't want to I don't want to go into it. But like, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. every claim that you've made regarding TV executive working with mm-hmm. WWE has been negative. Yeah, because they, they're not very thrilled. No, nah, I'll, I'll tell you that. Like, it's not it's not they're not like, oh, we're going to cancel them like nothing nah. like that. But you know what? You're paying a billion freaking dollars. You kind of want it to do better. It's money shit. It's, it's all, all money, money shit. shit. And that's the stuff I'm talking about. I'm right. covering the business end. I have no opinion of this. Right, right, right. I right. don't, I'm not doing a forensic deep dive on their PNLs, mm. which yeah. I would love to, by the way. Oh, boy. You want me, that's my porn, by the way. That's, you want to give me the PNLs. If you want to knock me out. Yeah. That is easier than chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the PNLs. Give me the budgeting. Give but, me the marketing, you know, allocation. Folks have to think, you know, like so and so person is under pressure to see this deal through and make it happen for their overlords, right? Yeah. When that shit don't happen, that's when you hear stuff like that. You know, like, hey, listen, like we're this is not what we agreed to. And let this, me, let me know. just say, you know, Russell Scoop, I never, listen, I don't pat myself on the back with any of this shit, except for Rich, and then I'm just, I'm just an egomaniac around him. Mm-hmm. But he wrote, <laughs> Andrew Zander solidified himself as the most, tr- most trusted source. You know why I'm trusted? Because I'm not, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I'm not trying to find stories like, okay, it's a Tuesday. Right. I don't yeah. have anything today. I don't have to do it because it's not my job. These guys have to post. And it's a right, very right, right. I'm going to tell you, you know, it becomes, uh, I'm not, you know, the guys that I talk to and work with, these guys mm-hmm. are the best of the best, right? right? Regardless of you thinking that they're always right, they're always wrong, whatever. Mm-hmm. But these guys are like the best of the best. And I know we're, we're running a short show, but I want to, um, now I'm on fire with this. Mm-hmm. But it is not easy having to do this. You have advertising, your, right. your, your career is based on this. It is a very difficult process. Right. And some people, I'm not I'm not going to say and it's not anybody we we talk about on the show. But right. some people say, "Oh crap, it's been 4 days. I don't have a big story." Exactly. Let me now fill in some blanks. I don't do that. Well, you know, I also think it has a lot to do with the fact that you, neither you nor, nor I are sneaky sneaky when it comes to this stuff. No, I don't. You know, listen, man. Like, I, I but I think that that's that's a lot of that other stuff what that we're we, not involved. We're again, we're not journalists. No, and what are we doing? You it's know? pro wrestling, guys. Right. It's fun. It's supposed to be fun. Mm. How are you so angry about it on the internet? Oh, How, it's it's men oiled up rubbing on each other. Yeah, man, dude, touching dudes. Women pulling each other's hairs and being uh, slapping each other and f- punching each other and hitting guys getting hit in the head with chairs. Commentators getting pied in the face. Exactly. I mean, this is the most wacky stuff in the world. Are you the Snyder Cut of pro wrestling? I, I am the Snyder Cut. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a fourteen hour version of the show. Uh, okay, Carissa, I acknowledged Andrew Zarian. I have acknowledged Andrew. I like it. Uh, I, I'm. I, I. By the way, this tan is unbelievable, huh? It's a good tan, dude. Yeah, you're gonna get even more tan. I'm gonna get even more tan. I can't wait. And so you're gonna watch me get extra pink. So Sunday. And then I'm going to go into wrestling. I was a very bad boy. I did not go to bed Sunday into Monday. <laughs> Insane. Uh, my wife and I went to Sins at Sapphire. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Sapphire throws this crazy Sunday party in, in New York. Yeah. Uh, there was, I mean, thousands of people. The line was to Third Avenue to get mm-hmm. in. We had Rihanna came in. All these celebrities came in. We had uh, a boogie duo performance. It was out of control. I was drinking, I was drinking tequila right out of the, uh, the Casa Azul. 
That's what that was? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was tequila. <laughs> I posted on my... Listen, man, I had, I had the best time. I'm just living life. I'm living life. I'm yeah, enjoying man. life. And when I don't enjoy it, I'm going to just jump into the vat of acid. The one you have in your basement. The one I have in my basement that it's not really acid. Okay. Yeah, it's a big trick. It's a big, uh, big trick. So, um, I don't know, man. I, I think this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun weekend. So, listen, the NXT stuff. Let's go into this. Okay. People are freaking out. At the end of it, listen, NXT. Uh, is a show on TV. <laughs> NXT started off as developmental, uh-huh. right? And it turned into something tremendous, right? A little bit by accident, more than anything else, mm-hmm. right? The initial conceptual concept of NXT, conceptual concept, right? Conceptual concept. Does that make sense? Concept. Well, just concept. Just concept. The original concept was: it's a developmental product. Mm-hmm. You're gonna put it on TV. It's gonna be extra content. We're gonna get these guys over, and then we'll see who goes to the main roster, right? They had like one or two guys, and they would like highlight mm-hmm. them and then move them. Highlight. The thing blew up. Because you had access to all this independent talent. You had access to right. talent that was leaving Impact or whatever they were leaving, whatever it is, New mm-hmm. Japan. And all of a sudden, within three years, you have Shinsuke Nakamura, Samoa Joe, Bobby Roode, Balor, uh, Balor Andrade. Kevin Owens, Andrade, Tommy End, yeah. Tommy End Drew, Drew, right? Drew came, went back. Ricochet. Ricochet. War Machine. I, I mean, the best of the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, all, all the undisputed. You had the best independent talent going to nxt because guess what there wasn't another option well, right if you even go further than that the original concept of uh, nxt was fcw pro- no it was remember the reality show quote unquote with oh my god pros and Terrible. rookies where the miz was the pro and dean o'brien i know the, but that was the mo- that was the one that most trolled the fans yeah that was a troll uh also we got five bucks from chris farrell make sure you wish a happy birthday housing to the one and only dan housing today yeah happy birthday dan housing fantastic gimmick uh they yeah like all the roh guys they brought in listen i'm not saying it can't get better but i think now it's kind of it, i feel like this was like the the unchecked child right. of pro wrestling and and they weren't the only ones right okay? look at this card oh my god yeah this was an evolve card that we went to and the lineup was unbelievable stellar you had gargano on that card ethan page uh, I mean, everybody. Zach Saber Jr. This NXT event, 2016. Yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura and DIY versus Samoa Joe in the revival. Asuka and Ember Moon. Uh, Asuka versus Ember versus Nikki. Cedric and Bobby Roode. Uh, Ty Dillinger, Eric Young. TM61. And who's the other one? I forgot. Oh, Sanity. I, I mean, it was Ridiculous. fantastic. And guess, but NXT cannot sustain that anymore. Because there's two hour two, product. Well, there's multiple reasons, yeah. right? First of all, Two hour product, so you need to be longer. Mm-hmm. But guys have an option now to go somewhere else, right? Mm-hmm. You now now your pool is limited with who you could get. Because AEW has locked up a lot of these dudes that would be in NXT tomorrow or today. You know, a guy like uh Sammy Guevara, mm-hmm. right? Great. Oh, yeah. He would be in developmental hell forever. Yes. Uh MJF would be there in developmental. Working, you know, trying to. I mean, I mean, he'll probably be on TV right now. But there's a tremendous amount of these guys. You know, mm-hmm. Kenny Omega would be on the main roster. Young Bucks would be on the main roster. Chris Jericho would still be there. Yeah, Rusev would probably still be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- there are the options are lim- were limited then. Now you have so many options. Also, guys don't maybe, you know, they figured out they can make a living on the independence or go to Japan. I mean, pre-pandemic, right? We're, I'm not, yeah. Now everything is up in air, but. The talent's not available, so you cannot compile a roster like that. And why would you, if your main roster is suffering, wouldn't you want to put your main, your your big talent on the main roster? Right. So they're in a conundrum, a, a a really uncomfortable conundrum where this product that was developmental became a mainstream product for the disenfranchised mm-hmm. fan that wants wrestling. Essentially, they went after Ring of Honor more than anything else. Right. Uh, they 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 took that model of a pro wrestling show, and now they have to concentrate on their main TV product. They got a Fox deal that the ratings aren't doing that stellar. Right. They have a USA Network deal, which is huge for them. They have right, a Peacock right. deal, which is huge for them. They got to concentrate on the products that will bring the most eyeballs and and feature and highlight the most talent, and that's the main roster. So yeah, taking a back seat with. NXT and hitting the restart and starting to build talent differently, mm-hmm. they have to do it. Right. But there's an argument that the the 
again, this is just pure speculation and it's not a knock on NXT, but it's a slight knock on WWE, you know, because now that they're really pushing forward their ageist mentality of like, we need young stars to headline these shows. It's, you know, they're going more towards like, we need homegrown talent. We need guys that fit the bill. I find it fascinating that they're, they're going back to something that I feel like was broken, you know? And I always think about Mason Ryan. Oh, you're talking that, like that early, early NXT. But I always think about how, like, you know, you had a guy like how Alex, does he not? Get, how does he not? Yeah, you had Alex Riley and um, a bunch of like Mason Ryan, like uh, Mason Ryan, like big dudes who fit that mold, and they're like WWE basically tells you these. Is, this is what we want, right? Nathan yeah. Jones, like guys like that, and then it doesn't go anywhere. I think who was the last? Was Roman the last? Like muscularly large guy that Roman didn't come from NXT was F- FCW FCW but is was he the last guy who fit that mold that, that made work that made it like Cena worked Orton works um Cena works Orton works that's Roman okay. Braun but Braun didn't even do any Braun mm-hmm. did no developmental All right he had eight matches <laughs> right it's it's working with Bobby oh, Lashley big, now big, Biggie oh Biggie was before before yeah. Roman yeah but I, like that body type you know it's very interesting and like I oh. from from a perspective point of view, you want to be able to sit in the nosebleeds and see yeah. a giant person. And I think that's the perspective. But also now it's the thing that I like about the rest of pro, the pro wrestling world is that for the most part, it's very organic. Yeah, right. It is. It is it, it, for the most part. Yeah, you're right. right. But the WWE stuff just seems over the past five years to be the most inner with with a couple of hits and misses, the most inorganic pro wrestling you could watch. You know what? I may go long today. Okay. I don't want to rush you. I'm rush feeling, me. I'm feeling you. Yeah, I'm feeling. Mean? I'm feeling you right now. I don't, don't want to rush. That you. Means. I don't want to rush you. I'm. I'm liking your points. So maybe we'll go a little longer today. If you don't mind, do you want to go? Long? I'm cool with okay, that, dude. Cool. All right. Maybe. Maybe we'll say F and go to uh, ten hours. Um, Forty-five hours. <laughs> you know. I. 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 You know. Do, how do you fix NXT? They know better. Listen, WWE is mm. not a lot of. Uh, they get. I. Don't attack companies like i don't attack aw or WWE unless right. it's like a flagrant uh, misconduct of some way that they're right, you know right. they're a detriment they they know mm. they have a plan okay i have pieces of that mm-hmm. when everybody's freaking out about nxt and this is it for nxt i'm i'm gonna say it's not what you think right it's not what you think but the only thing that's you know you got to think about not today. You got to think about tomorrow. And I think mm-hmm. that's WWE's approach to this. They're thinking about tomorrow and how they're going to build talent the next five years out. Right. So do you go back to the well of trying to grab guys that are under impact contracts mm-hmm. and ring of honor contracts and new Japan and AEW? Or do you say, you know what? We got to start build- Gable Stevenson. Great example, right? Big dude, big dude, Olympic gold medalist, American hero at this point. Uh, going into senior year, uh, yeah. Um, he is a WWE guy. If there's any company that could take a guy like him and develop right. him into being one of the biggest, biggest stars. Oh, I'm sorry. What a Stevenson. I'm sorry. Yeah. What did I say? Stevenson. Stevenson. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, Gable Stevenson. You think AEW could build him? Uh, you think AEW has the the developmental, the branding, the packaging? I'm gonna say they. I'm gonna say skill wise, the first thing that pops into my mind is Jade Cargill's first match with the tag team with Shaq. But but you know what though? That was a protected moment, mm-hmm. right? That was very protected, and they're gonna build her. WWE would never put Gable Stevenson on TV with that little to do. You know what I mean? Like okay. in that in that level, if you if okay. you're signing him, you're signing him, you're going to debut him as this like, mm-hmm. oh crap, he's here. But that's the thing. Do you think so? Not that Brock Lesnar was a slow burn, but I'm going to use Brock as an example. Yeah. You know, freak athlete, uh, all these accolades, right guy at the right place, right, right guy, time. right place. Did his training in OVW with an insanely stellar class. Vince saw him and was like, "You're my guy." Different cut of people though. Those guys right. are hyper and. For anybody that's been around, like mm-hmm. a real athlete, not yeah. like he played really good baseball in high school or right, college. Right, like right, I'm right. saying, like somebody on that one, that 0.5 percent tier, like of a Kurt Angle, athleticism. 
a Kurt Angle or uh, you know f any football player. You Brock, know, yeah, a, yeah. a Brock, a Brock Lesnar. These guys are wired very different. Oh yeah, compared to today, like that class of two thousand five. Uh, I'm sorry, the two thousand and two mm -hmm. that, that OVW class. These guys, you know, to be Batista, to be Dave Batista, mm -hmm. you are not like the rest of that locker room. Exactly. To be Brock yeah, yeah, Lesnar. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, are we a little softer? Is life a little easier? Yeah, life mm -hmm. is a little easier for these guys. And it's a different process now. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have these hyper aggressive to achieve guys that yeah. often. A Kurt Angle comes once in a lifetime. That's a, a whole... Gable Stevenson comes once. A Ronda Rousey, once in a lifetime person. I understand what you're saying, but like, uh, do you, th and this is a whole other conversation, do you think it's like all of a sudden now, more so than ever, we have celebrity athletes? Listen, I'm an athlete. Yeah. I scored four freaking touchdowns in high school Al for Bundy? Paul Kai. You Al Bundy? Al Bundy. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Ready? S Sal ready? Bundy? You want yeah, me to ready. <laughs> all right, ready? Ready? Hold on. I'm ready. I kind of, is, that's almost like a reverse dab. It is. Are we going to see you dab in Kofi Vegas? Thing. Are you going to keep dabbing? I'm going to dab. I'm going to dab all around Vegas. Are you? Can you do it like, uh, like the aviator, like a nervous tick, like be like. <laughs> like <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so I. NX to go back to NXT. Mm -hmm. They got it. They're reshuffling the deck. You know, they want these athletes. Yeah. They want. They want. They want stars. Didn't people also say this about Chad Gable? When they signed Chad Gable, him? Chad Gable is a star. Right. Chad Gable was a star. I mean, listen, you can't you mistakes are mistakes, but Chad Gable is also small. It also seems you can't you can't compare the same to you know Gable Stevenson. It also seems like the process is so heightened that you know they're not. It it just feels like they're not giving a lot of these guys enough time to breathe. You know, and the over thirty thing, I feel like that bit them in the ass. You know, when they were scooping up like all this talent. The over 30 thing, well, they were scooping up talent because it was available and they realized like, well, wow, this is working mm -hmm. and these are big names and we're filling this roster. You know what it was? It was the AWA invasion, mm -hmm. right? They grabbed all these guys from AWA. A lot of them were at the end, you know, a Sergeant Slaughter, big name. He was reaching the end of his run. They only had about yeah. five to 10 years. They, they, were, they didn't have guys that were... Um, uh, they, we didn't have guys that were really like super young mm -hmm. going into it. You know, they were all in their thirties. Ted DiBiase was in his thirties when he yeah. went to W. He wasn't like this 20 year old mm -hmm. that they could build from the ground up. And he had a couple of years on his career and that was it. Uh, same thing. Kurt Henning, right? Mm -hmm. Kurt Henning is another guy. Debuted in 80, what? 88, 87. Mm -hmm. And he was done by 92. But I think it's also like a different style. And like all these guys were big dudes. They were big guys. They were larger than life, and that's mm -hmm. what they're going for. And I get that. Yeah. You know, but this concept that they're not going to have smaller guys, that's not happening. They're not telling you, like, oh, no, we don't want the Daniel Bryans ever again. Mm -hmm. they, they're saying, like, okay, well, the main focus is going to be a little different. Also, it's a different generation now where you're not getting guys like Hawk and Animal in a gym blowing yeah, everybody different... away listen and, you know and by I mean? the way i'm not saying that that was the way to do it i'm saying it's a very different thing and wwe knows yeah. they're aware of this and they're they're working on creating the next group of stars mm. is it going to be is it going to be a daniel bryan i don't know is it going to be an adam cole i don't know i i, I mean that that's all up in air but you know what what's more impressive you know we're seeing what they want right, drew, right, right. they want drew mcintyre yeah. they want bobby lashley they want uh roman. john cena they want a roman reigns Orton. The, Orton is still or, or, like... Randy Orton. And Jesus Christ. They man. don't have those guys. They don't yeah. exist. They, it's rare. They don't mm. have a lot of those. It's very fascinating, Listen, too. Elias getting a, getting a re, re, uh, repackage, right? <laughs> yeah. Why? I think Vince finally saw him mm. without a shirt. <laughs> and was like, this guy's tremendous. Yeah, this guy's super jacked. He He's looks huge. like Seth Rollins. How He's, do you feel about everybody's hair and beard situation? Because it's all very similar. That everybody has the same look. Yeah. That's going to go away. They soon. made Mansoor cut I'm his hair. I'm telling you, though. that's going to go away. It's very shave uh, your sideburns. It's all shave your side. It's very, it's very, very fascinating. Um, very want, fascinating. Go. So Sasha Banks and Bianca got pulled from the weekend shows. Yeah, a lot of a lot of rumors and a lot of speculation mm -hmm. with this. Um, people are saying that it was COVID based. Uh, people are saying that it was. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. I have no idea why they were pulled. They were pulled from this weekend show. Yeah. Charlotte was also advertised for that show in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. uh, and she had no intention on being there. And I think people were freaking out over that and saying, like, well, what, what happened? Charlotte didn't show up. No, Charlotte took a requested time off. Yeah. 
She was also at the was backstage at, at AAA. She was at backstage at AAA. Uh, there was a translation issue with a report saying that she had a meeting, but she like met people. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, they yeah, were saying yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, she was in the back and she met, she met, but it said she had a meeting. Right. So yeah, people yeah. Were like, oh, she's leaving. Yeah, yeah. she'll never like, leave. Dude, Flair's Flair spot was good. We'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we got a uh, Survivor Series in Brooklyn. I'm pretty excited if we can go do this. Um, maybe, uh, maybe have some kind of meet and greet party situation. Yeah, we'll happening. do it at uh, McMahon's. Uh, yeah, whatever you want. Uh, 25th anniversary of The Rock. Yes, that is not that is not posted by WWE yet. But I was told that mm. it's expected that Rock's going to be there, uh, and they're going to celebrate his 25 years in the wrestling business. I believe you mentioned this uh, close to a month ago too. I did. I think it was. I think it was before 7:22. Uh, and it looks like you're going to have to show like your Vax Pass. Yes, New York City. Fine. You need a vaccine pass for mm-hmm. essentially everything that you do. Uh, so uh, if you're vaccinated, you're going to the show. If you're not, so sorry. Yeah. Uh, those comments on our Instagram post yesterday, <laughs> man. Good God. I know. I know. People need to take their heads up there, out their butts. Uh, Royal Rumble pay-per-view is reportedly being considered for St. Louis, Missouri, which makes me think that Randy Orton is going to win. It could be moved to February. Ah, uh, that is, where did that report come from? Because I had heard that. If you guys could tell me who it was, I could verify it. Because I was told that it, it was a, they, were, they would possibly move it to the first week in February. Mm-hmm. Um, did, you, did you see the Vince McMahon bucks? Uh, Sean reported, yeah. Th- uh, that, okay, so then, then, I'll, then, I'll, then I'll verify this. Mm. Uh, I had heard the same thing, that it was going to possibly get pushed to February. Okay. Um, I'm waiting to confirm why. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it has anything to do with maybe going back to Saudi Arabia. Interesting. I don't know. I, I, I got a message from somebody that's out there, okay? And he covers media in Saudi Arabia. He's like, I guess he's a journalist. I don't, I don't know exactly what he is. But mm-hmm. he sent me a whole thing of possible events coming. And he had alluded that there's going to be another one close after the, the last Saudi show. Okay. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I got to, I got to. Put it together. I don't know. But that, that could be a reason. It, it, but St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Royal Rumble, it's very possible. I believe that that's a very big possibility. Um, did you see that they're doing a one, one, one-time only John Cena NFT? No. Yeah, I saw, a, I saw a commercial for it. It's going up for auction. How much do you think this thing will sell for? Oh, it has to be at least... Well, that one went for 100 grand, right? That Undertaker one. Did it? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe ten thousand, maybe fifteen thousand. I'm gonna say more than that. Dude. Do you think so? I'm gonna say I'm thinking like thirty grand, but I, I, it'll probably be more. There's probably some John Cena fan out there who's like a finance bro who's yeah. like, I need it, dude. Um, also, fans can bid on bid on a chance to win a tour through WWE's warehouse with Triple H as their guide, which I imagine goes like this. <laughs> Here's the stuff. Here's he the got stuff. demoted. Now leave. Oh my God! Is he the janitor now? He's the janitor now. He got demoted. He's like, they, they, guys, uh, confirm it. Triple H got demoted to be in the janitor of the warehouse. Uh, Vince s- got very mad. He's sweeping up. <laughs> God damn it! You lost to those idiots. <laughs> vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, uh, apparently, there's going to be a mask mandate for WWE personnel and talent, which is, you know, they're being safe. They got a lot of live shows happening. You know, they may be traveling to some places that don't really require this stuff, but I think that's a good thing. Yeah, they uh, mask. They're changing their whole COVID policy now. Yeah, because uh, they're traveling and yeah. they're traveling from state to state, uh, so they have to change it. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Joe Pearl says forty five thousand for the John Cena NFT. Oh, that's not. You know what? That's a very big reality. That's possible. It is a big reality. It's a huge reality. Huge reality that someone's going to pay forty five thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. For a John Cena NFT picture. I also... Fucking crazy it's, times. It's like a blockchain... I don't even know what it looks like. I feel like it's just going to be like a gold bar. <laughs> <laughs> Some bullion. Um, uh, it's, been, it's been seven years since this guy left pro wrestling. And people are still... Seven year hard on for this guy. Have you I, had a seven year boner for CM Punk? <laughs> uh, it, it goes up and down sometimes. <laughs> You know, um, if I take my blue chew, it'll it'll be even uh, right now. I'm like five blue chews in for it because I think it's really cool that we're going to get to see it. It you is. Know? It is cool. And it's also like I feel like every like most people online have like this tantric hard on for this. dude. It's been like good years. and bad. Yeah. There's, good no and bad. there's nobody that's like, like oh, OK, that's cool. 
Like, uh, nobody's saying that. Everybody's like, oh, hell with F this guy. <laughs> How legitimate is he? He got beat up. I'm like, Shawn Michaels got beat up. Yeah. And it wasn't nine Marines. Right. All right. And and we were very quick to be like, oh, you know what, though? It's okay. It's Shawn Michaels. Mm-hmm. You know, there's been a lot of these yeah. stories. We got to. The guy had the balls. I mean, whether or not he's a he's a good UFC fighter. Mm-hmm. I mean, we learned that he's not on the UFC level. Is he probably decent? Yeah, I'm sure. But he got in there. He got in there. He had his match. He did it. And I think that's the I, point. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to get punched in the face like that. I mean, like, I wouldn't mind if I had the training, but he did it. You know, he got he got in there and he did it to do it. Right. And he did it. So he lived. He lived his dream. He had he had he was on two UFC shows mm-hmm. and he did what he wanted to do. And he's done. That's it. It's uh, better than most people sitting on their couch would do. Um, so he put he put he bleh, he put a weird tease out yesterday on Instagram and Twitter. Just three numbers. Oh, five, 11, 21. So those are his title wins. Oh, five Ring of Honor, Summer of Punk. Yep. 2011. Money in the Bank, Summer, summer of Punk. Summer of Punk. And 2021. Possible Summer of Punk. Possible Summer of Punk. So these are all the Summers of Punk. Uh, I cannot believe it's 10 years ago that he cut that promo. Yeah, dude. All right. And if he didn't, I don't think we would have ever just started the show. That is true. Yeah. You, we can thank him when we meet him. Yeah. Um, good booking or bad booking? Christian is, a, is the red herring for All Out, and it turns out to be CM Punk. So... Uh, I'm going to say I don't think they should do it now. So bad booking, in your opinion? In my, I, I think the match is a fantastic match, but mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessary. But I also don't think Darby should be the one facing him. Oh, no. Kenny Kenny versus Punk, all out. You, you want that. That's what I'm saying. Is it bad booking or good booking if they pull the trigger? I'm going to say bad. Okay. I, like, Listen, how bad could it be? You know what I mean? Right, how exactly. bad could it be? <laughs> but if I was booking, I would not book that match now. Uh-huh. I would want to see the tease and the build up on TV mm-hmm. little by little. Here's my do you know do you know in this fucking weirdo wrestling universe uh-huh. we could have CM Punk part of the Bullet Club. Think of that. Oof. Think of think of the bizarreness. CM Punk could become Impact Champion. Well, CM Punk could become NWA Champion. He could do whatever like this is all very strange times. And this is this is kind of like we're entering that like smart mark territory that we get accused of so often and it's true. But that's what makes this non WWE landscape of pro wrestling so much fun. Yeah, you know. Do you want to get out of here? No, no. no. I'm just checking. Yeah. I'm just checking. Um, that makes it so much fun. Where all the stuff you said could legitimately happen, right? Mm-hmm. Over the weekend, we got NGPW resurgence. Who'd have thought you'd see Mox and Yuji Nagata team up against Anderson and Gallows? Oh yeah. I, I mean, isn't that crazy? Who'd have thought you'd get Andrade versus Kenny Omega with Ric Flair? chopping kenny omega and conan and, and conan like woof this is like this is nutty cool fun shit you know? it is fun shit it, it's a lot of fun shit so and all i keep telling people is enjoy what you like mm-hmm. enjoy it like it uh who cares what the other ones are doing who cares what what's going on on something you don't like right why are you watching it why do you hate watch uh so once again we're gonna be live from las vegas SummerSlam weekend we're going to be mm. in Las Vegas at the Sapphire. We're going to be at Sapphire Las Vegas pretty much almost every night. But we're going to be at their day club, their pool, their topless pool. Uh, I got to whisper it every time because I don't want YouTube to hear me. Uh, we're going to be there on Friday. I'll have everything posted tomorrow as far as the time and everything. But it'll be in the afternoon. We'll be hanging out. We're also going to attempt to do a watch along. Mm. If the time works out for Rampage for the CM Punk debut, we're going to be in my luxury suite. In Las Vegas, Jonathan's going to be joining us also, so he'll be producing everything. Hell yeah. Uh, hey, YouTube Premium, we got custom emojis available now on YouTube. Uh, thank you for everybody that's joined. If you haven't joined, join, subscribe, become a member here on YouTube. Also, Mattman Merch, mattmanshop.my... What is it? Spread? Spread. Spread shirt. Shop. Spread sh- sheep. Sheep. Jesus Christ. Shirt. Jonathan, can you drop the link in the chat yeah, room, can please? You make, can you make like a short <laughs> URL? <laughs> mattmenshop.myspreadshop.com there you go also we have a link tree so there you go with all our stuff we're working yeah. on redoing our patreon uh we're up we're upgrading the youtube we're upgrading everything this is the uh the glow up for the Matt Men the glow up. in 2021 like we my promised tan. it would happen oh man how awesome Such a is tan. it's it's a very i'm a very tan boy it's a great tan how tan are you gonna get in vegas even tanner yeah no no underwear no no tan lines 
No. In for Vegas. Really? Oh, yeah. Good for you. Perennial, perennial tanning. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh huh. Does Every day, 15 seconds. We got to do it together. Does that mean sock on the ding dong? No. Do you know what perennial tanning is? I believe it's called perennial tanning. What's that? The butthole tanning. Oh, okay. You open up your butthole and you absorb all the sun's powers. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, people do this. Wow, wow, wow. I swear to God, people do this. Uh, it's hysterical. So, uh, yeah, we got a lot going on. All yeah. right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, and we then we'll do questions. But- Smackdown highlights. John Cena and Roman Reigns did a promo battle. You had dick jokes. You got Nikki Bella jokes. You got Dean Ambrose jokes. It was good. I think it was like one of those things where like, this is, this is what drew. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Like that. Yeah. Exactly. This is what drives me nuts about WWE. You have something like this that is friggin' fantastic, right? Mm-hmm. Two of the best in the business. And then it's an hour and a half of like. Nothing. Yeah. And well, Shinsuke winning was pretty Shinsuke cool. Shinsuke was great. Yeah. Um, But. It's Actually, like, SmackDown wasn't bad. SmackDown's a good show. SmackDown's yeah, SmackDown a good show. was a pretty good show. So you had that moment, which got, you know, it was big. Nakamura defeated Apollo Crews yeah. to win the Intercontinental title in 10 minutes. This was a very good match. Very cool. Second Intercontinental title for Nakamura. I like him in this IC title role. I think that's a very good way mm-hmm. to utilize him if you're not utilizing him in a main position. Seth Rollins promo we got on uh, Edge. Kevin Owens defeated Baron Corbin. Baron can no longer beg fans for money. <laughs> so good. So good. So good. It's uh, so good. My Smack- wife walked into the room during the Baron Corbin stuff. Ooh, yeah. Froze. And... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My wife walked into the room during the Baron Corbin stuff, and she started giggling like uncontrollably because it's so funny. All right, uh, let's see. You're frozen. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Well, I'm like, <laughs> it looks like I'm seeing something that I shouldn't see. I think my camera. Like, oh no. All right. I think it happened. It happens. It finally happened. It finally well, don't happened. bring that one to Vegas. No, this was the one I was gonna bring. Oh no. You got to bring that one. All right, let's go. Got to do that wide. Uh-oh. Oh, this doesn't even go back. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, it's going to be on me. That's fine. Time. Keep it on you. All right. Guys, sorry. We're having, uh, we're having a lot of uh, just a minor technical <laughs> difficulty right uh... now. <laughs> All right. I'll just. It looks like I'm coming. I'm coming. I like that shot, by the way. The, what? The wide shot? The one you just did right now. This one? Yeah. Is it looks that the good. same one? No, it's a little different, but I like it. Okay. So uh, Rich's camera just died, so I'm down mm. to one camera now. Great. Another $2,000 expense. I'll mm. just add. Uh, let's see. And Sasha Banks, uh, they did a contract signing because WWE loves freaking contract signings. Sasha put Bianca in the bank statement on the table. Mm. So we'll see what happens with this. AW Rampage. Very good show. 740,000 viewers for the first show. Very highly touted, uh, huh? I expect next week to go up. Due to CM Punk. Oh yeah, that was that was a fun friggin' show. Yeah, I gotta say. Yeah, uh, you had uh, Impact Championship match. Christian Cage defeated Kenny Omega to win the title. I think this was the right move. I think last week when we did the show, I said, "Oh, the first title, he should drop that Impact title." You you did say that. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. I, I wonder what the impetus behind that move was. Good question. Because I I would have thought. If, okay, if he's dropping that Impact title now, he's dropping that AAA title to Andrade tomorrow. Well, he was dropping the AAA title, and they uh-huh. switch it. So the story there is that Kenny was supposed to lose it. Okay. Oh, your camera's back. It might be loose. Maybe a cable's loose. Uh-oh. See? Something's going on. Ah! I'm back! There you go. <laughs> uh, so he was originally going to lose it, mm. but because he dropped the Impact title the night before... They didn't want to go ahead. AEW, you know, mm-hmm. they had they had they played their booking card and they said, Well, no, we'll do it at a later time. Mm-hmm. And when Kenny found out that Flair's there, Kenny insisted that he should lose. And Triple H said, No, we have the other plans. We we went forward with the other plans. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So Kenny wanted to drop the title. He's like, Oh, this is the moment. Well, that's this is pretty where cool. you do it. So uh, he's gonna drop it soon. I what did you think of the match? Uh, I liked it a lot, man. I really liked it. I disagree with what Dave uh, said. Yeah, I disagree with that so, a little bit. Dave's statement was interesting. He he mm. didn't, he, you know. Again, you're filling in blanks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah And it's, fine. It, it's a it's a it's a quick it's a quick statement that mm-hmm. you interpret however you want. He said that you know Kenny was there to have a great match and Andrade was having a good match. Yeah. I don't like. I have a difficult time watching uh, AAA because of the ring. Um, the ring yeah. and the camera cuts are really 
the ring is awkward. Yeah. I, I've never liked the the multi-sided rings, especially mm -hmm. in, in TNA. I hated it. And that was probably one of the main reasons why I couldn't get into it as yeah, heavy, yeah. heavily as I, I should have. Uh, it just doesn't. It, it aesthetically bothers me. I don't know why. Shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But the other thing was their camera angles are really weird. Yeah. So I, I, I was the match was it was fine. It was a good match. Yeah. It was a good match. That's about it. Yeah, it was I, fun. I mean, I felt like they did a good job. That was it. I, I you know, I have my my hangups, but other people don't. So, mm. so for other people, they thought maybe it was a, it was a fantastic match. Uh, TNA Championship. Miro defeated Fuego del Sol. Fuego Fuego got a contract. TNT. Uh, what did I say? TNA. TNA. I did that TNA last week. Yeah. Uh, TNT Championship. AW Women's World Championship, Dr. Big Breaker defeated uh, Red Velvet in the main event. That's awesome. Chris Stratlander tried to save Red Velvet's beatdown. Uh, that was it. Showed it 740,000. So is next week just going to be all CM Punk? Oh, yeah. I mean, it has to be. It's, it's definitely going to be. I mean, I'm, this week, actually. This, this, oh, this Friday week. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you think? You so say I didn't watch all of the, uh, triple, uh, the triple Mania stuff. No, I didn't either. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't go through all of it. NJPW, which we did not talk. You want to run down this card? Yeah, so like that, it was a lot of fun. It was like the return of like a big show uh, to the West Coast. You had Carl Fredericks beating Alex Coughlin, uh, Renarita, TJP, Clark Connors beating Fred Rosser, Rocky Romero, Wheeler Yuta. That was fun. Chris Dickinson, uh, Freddie Ahai, Leo Rush, Yuya Yamura, and Adrian Quest beating Team Filthy. A lot of these are Revolve guys, too. Mm -hmm. Tom Lawler, uh, J.R. Kratos, Danny Limelight, Royce Isaacs, and uh, Joel Nelson. That was a fun one, too. Nice and quick. Juice beating Hikaleo, another quick match. Uh, Ishii beating Moose. My nice, favorite match of the night. Nice big, big boy match. Hoss battle. You know, I loved, like, the. I think it was in the opening two minutes, Ishii not being able to knock down Moose and just bouncing from rope to rope to yeah. rope to rope to rope. I thought it was great. I, I really, I had a lot of fun watching this match. So my, my personal favorite moment of the night was Will Ospreay's return in promo. Surprise return too. Surprise return out for four months. Really fired up, like angry promo. Like the guy's gotten so much better with his words. He's gotten so much better on the mic. He's mm -hmm. probably practicing with his time off. Um, basically, an open challenge for anybody to take his real world title. Yeah. So what he said is he's going to defend it on New Japan Strong. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess they're going to have two titles now. American. One that's being one one that's being defended in Japan, and then once they could have a match, they're gonna have a match to unify the titles, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting that they're going down. This is not not necessarily a New Japan style booking, but they they kind of understand where wrestling is in 2021, and they need to go forward with it. Yeah, uh, I'm into this, but you know, he also brought up AEW, right? Forbidden Door, Forbidden all that Door, stuff. all that stuff. So uh, this is my I, fanboy shit. I know. That mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan really wanted to work with Will Ospreay. Okay. Okay. I, I know that that is a, for Bryan, that's a big thing. He wants to, uh, he wants to wrestle these guys. And I think the same goes for Punk. Punk yes. wants to wrestle these guys too. So I'm just going to say, I, I know that Daniel Bryan really would love to wrestle Will Ospreay. So I got a little bit of a fanboy swerve here. Yeah. I agree with you, right? But who's not to say that instead of instead of getting Tanahashi versus Moxley, we're getting Tanahashi versus Daniel Bryan and Osprey versus Moxley. Osprey versus Moxley. Wouldn't that be nuts? That would be nuts, but I don't think they're gonna go there. Because New Japan New Japan. New, New Japan, Japan. New Japan. Uh <laughs> New Japan clearly loves Mox. Oh yeah, they of course. He 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 fits he's right up their alley. He's their Terry Funk now. Do they love him enough to throw that Osprey title on him? No, no, they because he's not their guy. Okay. Yeah, he's not their guy. I mean, I, listen, you never you never know where it goes, but it's funny. I mean, but it. listen, we're gonna get Tanahashi mm. and Mox at all out. I mean, that's what this is leading to, right? That's how I see this playing out. I mean, think about that bonkers card that's going to be for that show. Uh, the card's going to be nuts, yeah. man. Uh, we also had the Good Brothers versus uh, Mox and Eugene Nagata. Ten-minute match. His great surprise. His surprise partner. Such uh, it's It sucks that Shooter couldn't have been there. And you had the main event, 
Uh, I'm sorry, not the main event. Semi main, Jay White beat Dave Finley, 22 minutes, good match. The Jay White stuff is also up in the air, too. I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up at All Out also. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of stuff with uh, Impact, though. Um, IWGP uh, US Championship match, Tanahashi versus Lance Archer. Uh, Mox was ringside. Archer invited Tanahashi to WWE. Is this leading to Tan versus Mox? 20 minute match, a lot of fun. I felt like, I personally felt like Tanahashi was like disgruntled from the get go. His jacket wasn't working. Oh, really? Is that the what camera happened? guy got, wasn't getting out of his way, you know? Fantastic. But great ending to that match, like double yeah. high fly flow. Um, and Tan, listen, Tanahashi, US champion. So he's going to defend that title somewhere sometime. In the US. Man. You know what, though? It is very smart for them to get those guys out of Japan and keep them here for a little bit mm-hmm. because, you know, they're cracking things down over there again. So it's going to be a very insane card. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do questions? Or do you, uh, do you want to uh, talk uh, about let's, Raw? Let's do Raw really quick. All right. So RKO is a thing now. They're going to challenge for the tag team titles this weekend. Yeah. Um, Alexa Bliss versus Eve Marie is added to SummerSlam. Terrible. Why? Why not? I let You know what? Hey, Nakamura's like, not on the card, though. He's not on the very odd. <clears throat> I think I think the Alexa Bliss Eva Marie thing. I feel like the only reason that's added is because of the doll. Oh yeah, because they want to sell the, that freaking thing there. They want to keep doing the digital wink with the doll. Uh, Lashley versus Goldberg. Um, Goldberg hit him with a spear. Uh, it says here the weakest spear ever. But <laughs> I find you know what it is like. I you know what takes away from like the Goldberg stuff what? having Sunberg. Like and his, hanging out and his buddies hanging out. Oh, I know. Sumberg doesn't look like he wants to be there. He's not having fun. Would you want if that was your dad? Would you want to be there? Oh yeah, if my dad was Bill Goldberg. I'd be I'd be going ah constantly. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll see. All right, Goldberg speared him. So it's, by the way, there's ten matches for SummerSlam, mm. and this is gonna be a quick show. They're not going very long. We're gonna. I'm, I have a feeling the show starts what four o'clock. Yeah, it's a it's a short show. All right, four o'clock. We'll get to the building at like three. Yeah. Uh four, five, six, seven, eight. By eight o'clock Pacific, we're done. hmm Pretty sweet. The latest. So no, actually I think they're gonna be out by ten thirty. <sighs> because they need they need to have people go to that Pacquiao fight that's ruined mm-hmm. because uh, his opponent got hurt. So they had to sub in somebody. Oh boy. So all right. Q and A time, boys and girls. Submit your questions and we will do our best to answer them. All right, we got uh, we got the super chats. If you want to super chat us, we'll throw you immediately uh, onto the immediate question asking. Uh, we're gonna try to get to as many as possible. I know we got a lot from Twitter, from YouTube. Did we do Twitch today or no? No, we did not do <clears throat> Twitch today. Forgot to do Twitch. It's okay. Last week was fun with the Twitch. Yeah. Uh, from uh, Fudu Buddha, five dollars. Why so damn tan, son? If CM Punk doesn't show Friday, do you think it hurts AEW in any way? If CM Punk doesn't show Friday, I, I think this would be a real. It, it would be like a baseball bat to the back of the head. Do you for think? AEW. Do you think it would it be would, really bad? It would just be a crowd of people choking each other. I, well, you know what it is. It would be just you know in the eyes of the detractors, it would be another disappointment from them. <clears throat> yeah, you know. I and again, a lot of the disappointment comes from online stuff. You know that 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 terrible uh explosion at the end really didn't help oh no the you know uh the speculation on who's debuting in AEW didn't help but guess what they got everything they wanted the speculation was with daniel bryan and cm punk remember people are speculating that it's cm punk it's somebody big it's somebody big and you know Mm. what you got two big names going there right now Imagine if this is all a work and this motherfucker shows up at SummerSlam. i mean can you imagine Can you imagine, dude? Oh, uh, boy. you know, I'm willing. I'm willing. To, I'm pretty confident. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I feel very confident to speculate that I'm a hundred percent positive that CM Punk's going to be in Chicago. You're speculating on your own positivity. I'm, I'm speculating on my own positivity. I'm pretty sure at a hundred percent. So, oof, dude. You know they can't. They can't. It's Braun. Can you imagine? Okay, what happens if it's Braun? Yeah. Oh, DJ Scandalous in the chat. He goes, it's Braun. Oh, uh, but here's the other thing. You know what I was thinking? I'm like, okay, well, what if it's Brian? Right? What if that's the swerve? But you can't do that swerve. You can't freaking do that swerve. You can do you can do Daniel Bryan as the warm up, and then all of a sudden, like right when you don't think Punk's gonna show up, his music hits, and he's like, I watch. No, they they Whoa. they ha- they're going to. It's gonna be Sam Punk. Mm-hmm. Now, what he does there, I don't know. We'll see. 
it's so good. I know. This I know. is so much this is this is so much fun because of the speculation and also I really enjoy this is not sadistic at all, but I do enjoy people going crazy with their weird things. I kind of do too. And we have them too, but you know, this motherfucker is going to show up on a zip line, dude. <laughs> uh, are you eating? Are you eating their hat? If he shows up, I will eat. I will eat my sock. If he well, shows up at SummerSlam. Those, you have to eat the magazine. If no, he shows you know up what? I'll get a tattoo. Oh, of CM Punk. Uh, yeah. On my ass. Oh, boy. Yeah. Like a terrible one, too. Oh, man. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Matt Reichel for four ninety nine. Have a safe Vegas trip and see you guys in Chicago and Queens. Thank you very much. Any truth to the rumors that Sasha and Bianca might not be at SummerSlam? Uh... I don't know. Uh, I, to be honest, I haven't really dug into it, but mm. I don't really, I don't really know. I don't know what the situation is. I, I haven't heard any like panic, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. All right, uh, John Gorman, five dollars. What's up, guys? Have fun in Vegas. Exciting week of wrestling, and man, has this SummerSlam build leave a lot to be desired. Say that again. Somebody Let's, reported something I said, and I was trying to figure out if they're uh, accurate or not. What's up, guys? Have fun Sorry. in Vegas. Exciting week of wrestling, and man, has this SummerSlam build left a lot to be desired. Um, <clears throat> that's yeah, the build for sure. I think they could, but you know, it's not the matches on this thing. Like, I'm gonna be into it. I'm gonna be into the matches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be into the show, but I'm going to the show. But really, there's not Roman Reigns and John Cena. Is the is the one that I kind of want to see, and Edge, and actually Edge, Edge and Daniel Bryan. That's yeah, the other two for sure. Uh, are the matches going to be good? Yeah, I'm positive they're going to be good. Roman's <clears> going to be a good match. Bobby Lashley Goldberg will probably be really quick and easy. Uh, Usos and Mysterios are probably going to have a good match. Bianca and Sasha will be a good match. Edge and Edge and Seth will be a good match. Sheamus, Damian Priest, okay, that's been a deep, fun program. Drew McIntyre, gender. This is the blow off. This is the end. Mm. Uh, Eva Marie, Alexa Bliss. Eh. AJ Styles and Omos <laughs> versus uh, RK Bro. They'll win the titles. That'll be a, that'll be the sell. You know, a thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's fine. It should be a good show. It's not gonna be a bad show. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be regardless of what it, the crowd's gonna be. Nuts. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna yell and scream and hoot and holler. And I'm gonna fall asleep because it's yeah. past my bedtime. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. It's early. Remember <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Early. Um, King PBH five bucks. Thank you very much. Without telling us what they might be, are you hearing? about any other surprises for SummerSlam this week? No, I have not. Interesting. I have not heard any surprises. Not CM Punk showing up? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I am the number one CM Punk fan oh, in the world. Shit. I'm the biggest CM Punk fan in the world, and, mm. I'm, and I, have, I have great authority to tell you he's debuting. He's returning to SummerSlam. Do you That's think... That's the news. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, boy. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Do you think... Um, how yeah. do you think people would react if... Uh, CM Punk's music hit, but it's you dressed like CM Punk. Oh, like really sloppy too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a not put together CM, CM Punk. bum. Very loose, yeah. very loose tights. <laughs> and I do everything the wrong way. Like, mm -hmm. what is his his clobber in time? I do it the wrong way. The clot, the I watch. go like this, and I go like this. <laughs> it's like oh, a last. Oh no. I want to. I want to come out as like a CM Punk cowboy gimmick. That's what I want to do. You, like a lasso and everything. I think people in the uh, in the in the nosebleeds would be like, oh, he's so tan. CM Punk so tan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's hit some of these uh, Twitter questions right. up there. Uh, this is from uh, D. Emerson. Eddie, should Ring of Honor and MLW walk through the Forbidden Door? Yeah. Yeah. I, get, probably, if they, I think it'd be a benefit to them. Any word? Uh, this is from uh, Pro Wrestling News Network. Mm -hmm. Any word on the main event of Saudi Arabia? Uh, no. I have no idea, actually. I don't know. I mean, we got another super chat that just came in. Ooh, we got another super chat? Yeah. All right. Uh, this is from Fight Me for five bucks. Is the punk deal short term? I've heard it's only through all out and full gear, then commentating part time as he has non AEW plans in 2022. Is this true? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what the date commitment is right. for him. Um, he does have other projects and they're allowing him to go do those projects. Now, I don't know if that means that it's like a very short term deal. You know, remember the Chris uh, Jericho deal initially was reported that this, gonna, this yeah. was going to be a short term deal and he was going to go away mm -hmm. and he never went away. He, mm -hmm. he kept at it. So I don't believe that this is like a like a one and done thing for him. Absolutely not. This is a this is a thing. He's going to be part of there. But I think there's a little bit of room for both to see how well it works. I think you also have to realize the folks got to realize that Tony Khan isn't a gotcha type promoter, 
right? I well, think maybe he is. Maybe he's like a real big gotcha and you really? don't even know. This is like evident from the last couple of years where like, you know, without talking money, Jericho was like, this is the biggest contract I've ever had for pro wrestling. And he's been doing so many favors for these guys and it's been working. Yeah. Who's to say he was like, hey, listen, I'm going to give you X amount of money. Do what you feel like doing. Do commentary, do a movie, do whatever you want. Just come back to us, you know? Yeah, I I, I don't think it was like that. I think it was... Mm-hmm. Uh, Actually, Tony's very, very like professional with like right. stuff like that. Same thing with Mark Henry and Big Show. Yeah, it's like they have you, other projects. You can do commentary. You can yeah. wrestle. You know, we're gonna see Paul White wrestle some wrestle KT Marshall, right? Mark Henry's gonna probably retire. Yeah, you know. So I listen. I I think that the the concept of locking people in right. to one job is crazy. It hurts. It really does, especially now that every you know media. I, I look at me. Mm. I got like fifteen different businesses. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like if, if one of my if one of my clients is like, oh, no, you can't you can't represent, you know, other people, mm-hmm. that would be a problem for me. I like to I like to do 5000 different projects. Some people like that now. People yeah. work differently now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Two dollars from Ricardo El Idolo del Distraction. Nice. Hey. Beautiful name. Hi, guys. First time live. Love you. First, uh, first time. Long time. Love it. Thank Love you, it. Ricardo. All right. Let's get back to these questions. His um, name is fantastic, though. Should we get out of here in a few? No, uh, keep going. All right, let's go. Th- let's do more. Mark H. Hey guys, do you all know how? It's Mark Henry. Mark, oh shit. Do you guys? How would you pop for a Mark Henry Daniel Bryan tag team in AEW? I would love it. And Big Show too. Oh. I want. It. I want to <laughs> see Show all those. Jericho? I want to see all those terrible WWE uh, tag teams. Uh, Big Show Jericho. Big Show Jericho. I want to see that. I want to oh, see all boy. the terrible ones. That was the era that I stopped watching. Okay, because it was so bad. Uh, hey guys, do you all know how WWE will tape their New Year's Eve show? That was just announced. Will it be like Rolling Loud, but with Times Square? Uh, the arena has the start time of 4.45 p.m. Eastern. I really, I don't know. Mm. Um, I'm kind of out of the loop on that New Year's. What, what is the New Year's plan? Oh, I don't know. Guys, send me the, I, I, I know that they're planning it. Yeah. Uh, I got asked about the Rolling Loud thing a bunch of times. It's a Fox New Year's Eve special, mm-hmm. right? That's what it is? Or no, 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 no. I'm sorry. It, it's let's see. Let's find this. Is it good? Yeah, it's going to be for Fox. Uh, what what year am I in? Where am I? I don't know, man. Are you still Where on? Am I? Oh are shit! You, have They're you still? Coming. Did the microdose kick in? The again? microdose is coming. Uh, announcement: New Year's Eve episode of SmackDown to take place at the Spectrum Center huh. in Charlotte. So we'll see. I don't know. Fascinating. Uh, we'll find out. I, I don't think it's going to run till midnight. I don't know. It's going to be in an arena. I have no idea what the plan is here. I'll find that out, though. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Um, from Vibor, will John Cena be at Survivor Series? Will John Cena be at Survivor Series? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. I would, I would anticipate him to be there. The big show. Now, I got a question for you. Yeah. Huge troll, yes or no, from WWE. Cena wins. They tout 17 title wins as like an F you to Flair. I don't... I would say, you know, WWE could do whatever they want. Right, but right, generally, right. when they're going to do something for like the 17th time, they bring it up over mm-hmm. and over again. They don't do it like very nonchalant. And I know that years ago, the, it was, they, they had a big plan for that. Like, if Cena was going to hit 17, mm-hmm. they really wanted this to be, like, the focal point. Because it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a historic moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know that it's a made-up number, 17, right? right? right but right. it's still a historic moment that, you know, someone has surpassed Nature Boy Ric Flair's world title win record. Nurture Boy. Nurture Boy. He's very nice to people. Very nice. Uh, this is from Joel Pearl, nemesis of the show. Do the guys want to get beat with pool noodles, flutter boards, or good old fashioned fists? Sandwiches. Three days, nerds. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get uh, all the girls to twerk on him and make him very uncomfortable and have him run away. Like pop his head off like a yeah, horror yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like a horror like, movie. Like, <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> it just, it, you know what it's going to be? He's going to be strapped down to a chair, okay? Strapped down to a chair with his eyes open, uh-huh. like a brain. And it's just going to be the girls twerking on him. Just and like he's hard, gonna, hard to the chest. And he has <laughs> severe, he, he's afraid of the cooties. He's a real germaphobe. <laughs> so every twerk that gets closer, no. it just he, his head just pops. No. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Chocolate Thunder. If Hangman's at All Out, who's he going to face? 
Punk comes out this Friday, starting a feud with Darby and his first matches with Sting on next week's Dynamite. Okay, so let, let's talk about the Hangman thing. A lot mm. of people were like, oh, this isn't good. Again, internet speculation, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, he's yeah. off. He's not getting the title match. What's that? He he actually said, mm. he. If, I believe it was part of like his idea. Mm. His wife is due like any day. His wife's due like very soon. So he didn't want to risk it. So uh-huh. I don't know if he's going to be there. Right, maybe, right. maybe she's got. I don't know. I, I don't ask about the personal life stuff ever. Uh, but I, I think that played a big part in this, and they moved it. Listen, I, I, he is going to have his moment. You got to you got to do it the right way. Yeah, yeah. Is the moment the night that CM Punk debuts on your card? You don't need to do it that night. No. I, I think it actually takes away from what they're planning on doing that night. I do think somebody will attack Punk and get the biggest heat major heat in the that, world okay that darby match darby's gonna lose okay if they do that okay it doesn't hurt darby no i also don't think that should be the first match no not at all i i i, I like that's my again my opinion mm. i don't think darby allen should have been his first match back but it could be anybody and it could that, be that's anybody a cool thing. you yeah. could have had anybody in that position could be uh what's his name pillman jr uh, i wanted to make <laughs> no i need to be like a real heel okay MJF would be a fantastic opponent for him. MJF would be great. Um, he beats Jericho. Right? He comes out and he gloats. Mm-hmm. And here comes CM Punk. But then do you have him lose to CM Punk? Right. right. You know, like this. There's, there's so many things you could do with this. There's mm-hmm. a lot of things you could do with this. They just got to do it the right way. Eddie Kingston. You uh, got to have $5 from Nickel. Nikolai. Nikolai. Uh, hey guys, change of gears real quick. Aside from Ruby Soho and Jamie Hayter, any word on some big women pickups for WWE? Uh, for for AW. AW, I'm sorry, I can't read. Uh, no, that's about it. Uh, I know that they, you know, Ruby Soho is a name that everybody wants. Yeah. I don't have anybody else. Uh, Joe Pearl says that will not work, by the way. Oh, really? Your twerk plan. Oh, wait, wait and see. <laughs> oh, boy. Wait All and right. see. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Brandon Santoro, sorry if this has been talked about, but what is your feeling on where Adam Cole goes, AEW or WWE main roster? I think he should go to WWE main roster. He's very established there. People Mm. like him there. He's been there for a long time. He was a big part of their NXT boom period. Uh Uh, I, I don't... I don't think... Going to AEW would be that much of a benefit. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people want him to go to AEW, right, right. but you got to think about his positioning and who his allies are in the company. Uh, yeah, does WWE have a bad track record? Yeah, sure. Whenever they bring someone up, but I think a guy like Adam Cole is special, and I don't think he's going to have a lot of those issues. Okay, I'll agree with that. Yeah, uh, this is from Fight Me. Another five bucks. Is there any punk news you're holding on to at the moment? It's exciting, and I need to know more. Oh, it's going to be there Friday. You'll find out. And so uh, will you. And so will I, because I don't know <laughs> anything beyond that. Uh, no, I, listen, I know, I know that there's a lot of excitement. I know a mm. lot of people are talking about potential future matches. How does Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson play into this? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, how do you utilize CM Punk in a way that's kept really special? Because now mm. you're top tier of talent. Regardless of what you think of CM Punk, he's still a top, mm. top tier main event guy. Absolutely. Uh, how do you... You know, how do you do to shuffle? How, so you have Kenny Omega as a world champion. You have Hangman Page there. You're going to have Brian Danielson there. You're going to have CM Punk there. Uh, Chris Jericho's there. MJF is gravitating man. towards that position. Um, who else did they have in that top spot? Christian now, yeah. you know. But I think Christian is more like upper mid, you know. Mm. I don't think they're, they're planning on putting that world title on Christian and having him be the face of the company, but... You know, there's so many different moves here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Plus, like, the outside interest like the new japan stuff possibly happening yeah um the possible the always the possibility of the ring of honor stuff happening mlw um let's see so here's something interesting russell votes okay. friend of the show mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i know his identity really mm-hmm. i know who russell votes is do i know him? you do oh i knew it mm-hmm. i knew it mm-hmm. i knew it he's very tan too Good, uh, very tan. Good quote from these guys don't know sports. Really hoping Punk actually shows because if not, I'm gonna be stuck in a Chicago riot. <laughs> uh, Gary from the mailroom at WWE is fantastic, by the way. Beautiful it, tan. He just came back with his wife from is Barbados. It, is it Janet to Triple H? It, huh? <laughs> is Janet, it Triple H to Janet? Yeah, so he wrote, uh, with the success of ML, MLB had with the Field of Dreams game last, last mm. week, WWE has 
has begun very initial discussions about doing a few off-site events in 2022. Some ideas mm-hmm. discussed with creative with creative include Raw on the Roof, <sighs> Hammerstein Ballroom, I'm cool with that. and more direct festivals a la Rolling Loud. That is 100% accurate, his report, by the Raw way. And the I, know, I know the person that has mm-hmm. suggested some of these ideas. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Raw on the Roof, like... On the roof, Thirty Rock, or like Empire State Building, <laughs> any roof. Imagine, no, our roof. Imagine <laughs> it, would, it would probably be like on Titan Tower. Yeah, like no, it would probably have to be like if they're doing New York City, like they'll probably do like. Uh, it would be cool if they did that Radio City thing on the roof. Yeah, destroy I'd like that. everything. Destroy Radio City, and on a windy day, yeah. like a windy New York City. By the day. way, it did work for MLB. That Field of Dreams thing. Yeah, very cool. Very, very cool for baseball and very outside the box for baseball to think because they, they're all about statistics mm-hmm. and analytics. Uh, they're a bunch of numbers nerds over there. So to be creative is wonderful. Joe Pearl had a great quote here. Yeah. Uh, I hate to give this guy credit. Yeah. Uh, Raw on the Roof sounds like a bad recreation of Fiddler on the Roof. If I was a rich man. <laughs> oh, a little, 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 little. It's good, man. It's yeah. great. You uh, are really tan. Look at dude. Thank did you. Did you see yourself in the monitor? Oh, this is obscene. This monitor yeah. is, and the saturation is low on this one. Uh, is Russell Votes a wrestler? I am Russell Votes. Oh, shit. Sure. Been me all along. Double life, man. You got another family somewhere, too? Maybe. maybe listen, maybe he's in Vegas. Oh, are, are we going to meet this guy? All right. I hope he, if we do, I hope he announces himself. Is it, goes, wait, ready? Ready? Yeah. Bret Hart. Mm. <laughs> Yano? Tor- it's Toriano. It's, Tori- it's been Toriano all along. <laughs> all right, what else do we have? Uh, it looks like that's it for that's questions, it. man. Uh, we- just tuned in and got treated to Fiddler on the Roof run it. <laughs> that, that dude? Yeah. Uh, There's well, no other pro wrestling podcast that will provide you with Fiddler on the Roof references. Fiddler on the Roof references, and you name it, we got it. Uh, it's May. It's May de Blasio. Oh. I'd be upset if Russell Votes was really made to Blasio. <laughs> I would be so sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were just a run of the mill giant. You want to hear my? I could, you, I could do a Russell Votes impersonation. Okay, go ahead. You want to hear? It? Yes. If I do the voice, it'll give it away. Okay. Hey, it's me, Russell Votes. Dr. Fauci. Did you guys hear? <laughs> Undertaker, John Cena, Saudi Arabia. All these things are happening in wrestling. Hey, Mayor de Blasio, I got my vax card. Can I go eat? Is that Michael B. Jordan, the actor, or is that Dr. Fauci? It's it's Russell Votes. It's, <laughs> That's what he sounds it's Dr. like. Fauci, it's Dr. Fauci, Russell Dr. Fauci. Votes. It's Dr. Votes. It's Dr. Votes. Dr. Votes. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but, you know, Vince McMahon, get a, get a hold of yourself. Get a hold of yourself. That's what he says to Vince regularly. All right. Um, how's Curtis Sliwa's campaign going? Uh, he's still what? living in the sewers. Oh, yeah. King of the Muckmen. King of the Muckmen. All right. Uh, I think we're done, right? I think we're done. All man. right, guys. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. We'll see y'all next time. Take see care. See you in Vegas. See you in Vegas, guys. Bye.